welcome you all to Amrita Vidya Vedam. We start the session in another five more minutes. We expect more individuals to join. Thank you. Very good evening, one and all. We welcome you on behalf of Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pitam. Sri Mata Amrita Anandamai is our guiding light of this prestigious institution. As we all know, she is a world renowned humanitarian leader and a spiritual teacher. With her blessing, we will just proceed to today's topic technology for school. How schools should change towards online solutions? Basically, this is to know about the impact of technology in classroom learning and understand its influence in shaping the young tomorrow makers. About the speaker, Mr. Srivatsan, currently he is heading IT infrastructure management of Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pitam He has over three decades of years of experience in IT management and teaching. He was instrumental in installing Param. 10,000 supercomputer facility at Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pedam in 1998 and multi campus satellite based e learning network in 2004 in partnership with ISR. This is a small introduction about 
uh, about our today's presenter and he will engage yourself for the next 45 minutes or over so uh, over to you professor thank you uh thank you hamidan for that uh, introduction uh, so good evening to all of you i hope i am audible to all of you if uh, the host uh, amudan can just uh, confirm that i am audible i can yes. go ahead yes sir it's very much audible yeah. thank you so um, good evening uh, and uh, welcome to this session on technology in schools um, so i know that uh, this group uh, is a large group that we have today uh i see a large number of uh, participants who are joined this group uh so uh, welcome again uh so this is uh, one of those um, uh, webinars uh, being conducted by amrita vishwavidya peetham uh, especially during this uh, pandemic season uh so um i will uh, start with the uh, an ecosystem of a school uh, what does a school or even an even a, a, a college Uh, makes i mean what is it made up of so we know that um, there are mainly three components or three stakeholders that come into this uh, ecosystem and uh, one of the most important uh, part of that are the students i mean that they make up the entire uh, the most of the ecosystem and definitely the next one is the teachers and there are a lot of administrators who actually run the administration of the entire process that happens in each of these institutions there is one more stakeholder that in fact uh, but i have not included them in this particular uh, slide and that's uh, the parents which is very important but i have not included them because uh, we are right now this session that we are addressing is mostly the students um, teachers and administrators though parents do have uh, a stake in this entire process but in this session i am mostly addressing these uh, three major stakeholders in that process so uh, with that said i would uh, like to know um, whom i am addressing to so i know that there are i can't see you uh, this is a, as you know it's a very um, a peculiar situation I, i mean and it this is a peculiar platform where i can't see uh, who's attending this and who are the who are the who are the who are the attendees over here but then i would like to get some idea on uh, who all are here so for that i would uh, run a small poll here and uh, i would recommend i would request you to kindly um, uh, respond to that poll and uh, and that poll is very simple there are only two questions there so i'll just bring up the poll right now if you can just give me a half a minute and you should be able to see the poll on your computer or if it is your laptop or if it's your mobile you should be able to see the poll coming up in about half a minute so just give me a there are only two questions there so i would request you to answer those questions i hope you are able to see the poll right now and i would request you to kindly answer those two questions that i'm asking just two questions whether you, who are who you are whether you are a student whether you are a teacher or an administrator and uh, how comfortable are you with uh, technology and there are people who are very comfortable i mean the moment they get a gadget they are extremely comfortable with that uh, with the systems in that so uh it's a good group actually i mean it's a difficult group actually i can see in fact um, uh yeah thank you so i think there's a large number i mean a good number of you are responding to it uh, i have about 67% are uh, responded so i'll wait for a minute or so and then get the complete picture but i don't think i need to go till the end of this poll where everybody answers this uh, question uh i would like to see the second question rather rather than the first question okay so 
yeah, that's a good number that I've got. So I just wait for about a minute before I think there are a lot of people responding to it. So just give me a minute for so that it gets over. And I'll just I'll also share that what what the group is about. So because in this kind of um, uh, interactions, you would also like to know whom you are with. It's because you you also can't see who's uh, sitting on the other side. So I think we are, I'll stop the poll because I got a very good understanding of the crowd and uh, I will close the poll now. So those who have not responded, it doesn't matter because uh, I just wanted to get a sense of or a pulse of the people who are going to be in this. So about 80% uh, of you have responded. So thank you for responding for the, to this, uh, to the poll and I'm closing the poll now and uh, what I see the, in the poll is, um, this is a difficult group in fact, because uh, about 88% of uh, the people are teachers. And that's a good group and it's, it's completely swinging, swinging towards the, towards that they're all teachers. So it's, uh, so I don't, my, I mean, one way that my job is easy because I don't need to uh, formulate my, 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 my ideas, uh, some onto the teachers and students, but the whole group of students, so that's that's easy, and I find that most of you are comfortable with uh, uh, the technology and ready to uh, take up technology as it comes, and then you're ready to do it. So, um, so I I'll start. So I'm closing the poll, and let's start with the uh, let's go ahead with the uh, presentation. So. so I got the now I took a I, I in fact this is the first time I went into a dictionary and to look at what is the meaning of technology and uh, technology is uh, I mean it, it, it I mean it's a, it's a different meaning there but I just wanted to understand what does the dictionary say about technology because uh, we all have a different understanding of technology as some I mean I mean for 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 for, for many people it may be different but if you see Technology basically is something that uh, you would always use, I mean, you would tend to use. And why do you use it is maybe because of various reasons. And definitely when you use technology, the quality of that output that you do, I mean, whether it's teaching, whether it's singing, whether it is, uh, it is uh, uh, logistics management or whatever it may be, there could be an enhancement. I mean, we expect that the quality would increase. So one reason why we use technology is to enhance the quality of the process that you're doing, whatever the, may be the process. And of course, when you increase the quality and when you use technology, probably your efficiency of doing that process also will increase. And that's how we have seen I mean, many times when we employ or deploy technology in the work that we do. And it might bring in a lot of um, uh, professionalism uh, to, uh, in the process that you're doing and uh, it will increase the productivity of that process. Who is part of the station or a part that's doing that, uh, whatever. So it basically increases the, uh, the slide. We will revisit this slide maybe uh, in, um, in, in about, uh, by, the, by the middle of this session. We'll see how we will, uh, we will uh, come back to the slide and see whether we have understood this process or not. Okay, so let me move forward. Um, so, Let's say we go ahead with the technology. We want to embrace the technology. Okay. Now, before you embrace technology in whatever field that you're working in, whether it is uh, accounting or whether it is uh, teaching or whether it is whatever domain that you're working in, you should now you should have a, a good understanding of the domain. So, as teachers, more than me, maybe you 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 interact with the students much more than somebody else or some other, I mean, so you are the right person to understand the domain. So if you're an administrator, then you know the domain. If you're a student, then you know what you need to, I mean, what you're supposed to be doing as a student. So every person is the, who's doing in that process is the right person and he or she should know, have a good understanding of the domain that they're working in. And, uh, as you work in that, as you as you go through that process of um, in that process, uh, you might face a lot of challenges. 
there could be a lot of obstacles and probably probably those challenges that you face could be solved by a technology or some technology bringing in technology you may be able to change i mean address those challenges and probably uh, most probably you could be able to resolve or find solutions for those uh, challenges that you are facing and as you move ahead because of your knowledge of the domain and if you can bring in technology more and more you may be able to innovate the processes now when you say in innovate it's finding new ideas on how to conduct that process so that it becomes much more effective for the person who's receiving it so if you take a teaching itself i mean can i make it more better for the student can it can it be more um, can can the experience of the students be enhanced using technology so so as you move ahead because you have a very good you have a very good knowledge of the of the domain so you know what the students might need i i i've, I've heard teachers telling uh, for example even i know that for example if i if i ask a question if the student has answered a wrongly i want to know why he answered wrong i mean not that he has why he has answered right also i would like to know so it's it's so you may use technology to understand the student also so we will come to those slides at later stage okay we'll see how that happens and can i adopt it and is there a technology at all where my challenges can be addressed is it there or can i use the technology and if i'm going to use it how much of i like use it can i cover the entire post process of that i'm doing uh, from the beginning to the end whatever can i can i have a can i have technology solving all my thing the entire thing so there is a lot of these are some of the some of the cha- I mean, questions that you may ask uh, you may want to ask and then these are something that you should be ready to um, ready to address so a good knowledge of domain is definitely required because unless you know the domain that you're working in you may not be able to now i would like to take a small example so let's take a small example of a sound engineer it's quite different from what you are doing probably so let's say uh, you're talking about a sound engineer so you can see i put the three photographs here now these three photographs in the first two photographs in the top are probably about 30 or 30 years back or i don't know honestly but one thing is sure you can see the difference between the two photographs on the top and what's happening on the photograph below that's one domain where technology can be put in and how much depends on the sound engineer so if you take any domain you will find that technology has made its inroads into that in, into those areas and it has in fact enhanced the quality and has the productivity or uh, the experience for example if you go to the supermarket what has happened over the years the billing has become easy your payments have become easy so technology is trying to solve those challenges and make it more productive and easy for you to conduct your business so uh this is only i just took an example of a sound engineer so let me straight away go into the process that we are doing in a school so if you're talking about a school what are we doing there it's pretty much teaching and learning i deliberately i deliberately not use the word education because education i think i feel it's totally different from all this because it's much more than teaching and learning it encompasses teaching and learning process that happens in the school the collaboration that happens between the children the collaboration between the teacher and the student the collaboration between the parents and the students the collaboration of the student or the child with the society so education is a, a, a bit more larger uh, ecosystem or it's much more than what happens so i that's why i deliberately uh, did not say how to bring online education or online technology into education i would say teaching and learning process so let's address that at least right now 
So in this, that's, that's why I have not put the word education there. So teaching learning process. So that's what happens in a school. I mean, one of the things that happens in the school, because education also happens in the school. So one of those components is teaching and learning process. So when we have this teaching learning process happening in the, in the school, then uh, what do we see there? So I would, I, I, I would take one more poll at this time. And I also have some people raising their hands at this point of time. I don't know whether they have a question or not. We will take up these questions as soon as it comes. If you have any questions, if you wanted to raise any questions, please click on the question answer tab on your screen. And then you can just type in the questions. We'll address all those questions at the end of the session. So there is a Q&A part in, your, in, in the WebEx. Uh, it shows as a question mark, you click on that, and then you can put your question there, and then we would address that sometime later in the session. So, um, so let's come back to the teaching and learning process. So when you see the teaching uh, 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 learning process, we do have uh, uh, a lot of, um, I, I'll just move my slide and then come to that. What happens in a school in the teaching learning process? You have a synchronous learning, or this is called where, where everybody sits in a class. There's a lot of teaching happening. There's a lot of interaction happening. Students go in to write some exams. Assessments happen. I mean, the photograph, in fact, I put a photograph where students are writing on a tab. But let's not worry about that. Assume that they are writing on sheets of paper. There is a marking or some certifications happening. The students pass the exam, and then they move forward. So this is mostly what that happens in every school or any teaching institution. This it's more of a, a synchronous learning that we are seeing. So everybody synchronously move towards. So there could be there could be a lot of homework that is happening, which is outside the school. There could be a lot of learning that the students are doing because of the lot of online portals that have come up in the last five or six years. So there could be, but. Basically, basically, we are all teachers. I mean, in a school, if you're talking about a school, this is what happens. However, now what has happened is, now we are in a trouble. Suddenly, we are, I mean, it's like a tsunami of, uh, or something. We are hit with this pandemic. Now, that's a big challenge. Even, I, even if I know my domain very well, I know how to teach. I know how my students react. I know how I, 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 I can pretty well control my or do a fantastic job in a classroom. But we are stuck now. We are all stuck with this coronavirus. And then what has happened is, uh, if you see the number of students that are outside, uh, who are going out of, this, out, out of school, you can go and see the WHO, I mean, UNESCO reports. It's only, I, I, as I know, I mean, in, in Australia, where students have started coming back to school. They started coming back to school about a week back in most of the parts of uh, Australia. But I don't know which other schools are now started working. But in India, we know that we have our students, our kids, whether it is in the primary or high school or even college, they are all out of, out, out, of, out of the classrooms. So this is a major challenge. Now, I would like to bring up a poll right now which is basically on a small, so let me bring up, bring up the poll right now. Again, give me a minute, I'll just, poll will come up. Uh, just give me a second to bring up that poll. So this poll is mostly on something before the coronavirus, okay. So I hope you're getting the poll. So if you can please answer that, we'll see how the group reacts to it. So in the previous poll, what has happened is I got about 88% I mean, of poll, I mean, response, and most of them are teachers, and they are all very comfortable. I mean, a good percentage of them are comfortable. But there was a 15% people who said they're scared of technology. Okay, that's also very uh, infamous. There are people who are not ready to embrace technology. But if you 
start using it's only a it's only a beginning problem so once you begin using technology you you will start finding the how many challenges that you have been facing get resolved and then that will take you forward so uh, these are questions how much of technology uh, did you use in your teaching process in the pre covid so we have about a good percent i mean uh, yeah so uh, there are it's mixed actually there is a small percentage of people who have using technology so it's good to know that you are using technology and like how have you ever done a course on or delivered a course yeah most of you would not have okay so that doesn't matter and so the question is the last time in the third question that is in the covid period do you feel that you should have used technology in your pre covid and and as i expected most of you think that you should have used a lot of technology even before covid and that's how everybody feels now and the last question is do you think technology will enhance learning and most of you think that it will it will i mean there's a good percentage of you telling that it might or it will enhance learning so uh, thank you for those answers i mean that gives a see we all some of you have used technology in our teaching but we definitely feel that we should have used a lot of technology before covid because what has happened now is uh the synchronous learning the synchronous learning is completely now shut down we we are not able to get the students to the classroom and then take them all together as a group not possible so what has happened is now we need to find a quick solution immediate response i mean that's how people have reacted if you see the universities especially universities because schools are, were almost at the fag end of the of the teaching by march i mean normally they find it with the march end so uh schools now realize that they need to get into a lot of technology to interact with the students the universities have already done that if you take amrita vishwavidyapeetham as as my as uh, amudan was introducing in my introduction we started the e learning process in 2004 and that was with uh, the help of isro we did a satellite i mean internet was not that um, uh, that strong at that time and so we did a uh, it was before edusat in fact so amrita university went into e learning in 2004 we set up a satellite network connecting all our campuses and we used to conduct so if you had a if you had a good teacher in one of the campuses who could teach much better than a teacher in the in the so they could send out a lecture live with two way interaction so that was possible at that time in 2004 that's about 15 years back we could do that so that was a very big step for us so uh, that was a very good experience also for me to set up those uh, networks so today what has happened is for most of us it is taken them by surprise and you're forced now and you're forced to take those uh, take a step to 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 technology and we find that most of you are having uh, an issue or 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 some kind of um, um uh, challenges getting into that most of you will i mean i but i i feel that most of the teachers will easily get into those uh, into, into 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 the technology i mean so we will see what i mean so how do i get into the how do i get into the uh process of uh bringing in technology into this uh, ecosystem or into your school so technology into your school so the first thing is that you know your you are you are good you are, you are, you you are all good in teaching you are all good in understanding your domain the administrators and the teachers the first thing is identify a platform what is that you want to do so if you take only teaching let's say that's that's immediate response you know how do i convey uh that the lessons to my students 
who are not able to come to the class or were not able to travel into the school or come into the school. So how do I connect to them? Now, when you want to do that, you need to identify, it could be anything. When I say anything, it's somehow, whatever you want to communicate should be able, I mean, you should be able to communicate to the students. They should be able to listen to you. And, and you also need to get to know whether they have understood that. That's the most difficult part. Now, you could be using, you could be using any of those platforms that we have seen in the, in the market. So everybody jumped into some solution or the other. Now, I'm not going to go into each of these solutions and then uh, find out which is better, which is good, which is bad, because um, to be frank, I have not used all of them for that matter. I mean, I might have used almost, I mean, 90% of those things that you see there. So many people have gone into some of these, uh, I mean, most of these, um, these, um, these solutions. Now, solutions, there are many. There are many platforms. So it could be Google, Microsoft, WebEx. WebEx is what we are using right now. So right now I'm communicating to you through WebEx. This is one platform, one such platform. So I'm able to communicate to you. I'm able to get your responses through a poll. Who are you? What, is the, what does this group consist of? Now, when you, now, this is a more difficult way of, I mean, this is a more difficult group actually. But then if, you, if you're talking about students, you already know them under their new students coming to the class. So when you know the people, then it is easier to, now this is a very, very important, uh, I mean, very, very big challenge in fact, because if you have new students who have come to the class, you don't even know them. But if you have a group which you know, and then you interact over, an, over, over a medium like this, it's much more easier because I know whom I'm talking to. But when you talk to people whom you have never met or you don't know how they, I mean, it's difficult. So that's, that's, these are challenges that will come when you come go to online things. But technology may be able to resolve most of them. You, I mean, to, I mean you, you could send out um, uh, surveys, understanding, to understand what kind of people they are. You could do a, a one-way, I mean, you can do a two-way video conferencing with each of them on a particular day so that you get to know them more and then conduct classes. So people have, I mean, I, I know teachers who have just gone and started take, uh, recording things on WhatsApp and sending it to children in their class. So every day morning, the students get, I mean, the students get a video of the teacher. I mean, that's, I mean, that's one, I mean, at least they're doing, I mean, there could be many ways of doing it. But when you, when you, when you, when you go to a little more, end, I mean, as a school, as a, as, as a technology in school, I mean, this I'm, I mean, now this is not, this is not uh, for only for COVID area or in Corona or something. So what I'm going to speak further is not uh, basically because of Corona or something. You could do that even beyond Corona. We, I mean, my uh, feeling is that we will come out of this one day, maybe two months or whatever, three months. If we are, we, have, we need to come out of this. As a human being, we have, we should have the willpower that we will come out of this. But when we come out, then we should not say, oh, oh, forget all those, forget all those technology. Now we are back. No, because when you bring in technology, it's not only to combat or uh, just because of Corona. It should not be just because of Corona, but Corona is definitely an eye opener for us. That's why, you know, have you taught a class online before or have you engaged the students online using some online mechanisms? So if you had done that and all those things that I'm talking about has been existing over the last number of years, all these technologies have been existing over the last number of years. I always take an example of kitchen. Kitchen, yeah, that you, you heard it right, kitchen. Because when you say kitchen, all those things are there, but then you find that new People bringing out new things out of that kitchen. Now, why didn't you think? Why didn't you think of those? So, technology is like that. You have all those pieces out there. Now, it it, it depends on how you take out those pieces of things, make them together, and then deliver it. Uh, make a package out of it and deliver it to the students. And you you are the right person to decide that combination. It's like a good cook, you know. So he or she will know what is the right combination. So, if I get into, I'm a very bad cook. So, if I get into the kitchen. 
and I start mixing, it may not come out correct. But then, if, it's, if, if the person is a good cook, they will put the right quantity of all those ingredients. So that's how technology should be used. You need to take the right quantity of each of those components that are available to you, mix it. Because you are the right, you are the right cook. And mix them and then deliver it. So whether it should be Google, Microsoft, probably you need to try it out. Unfortunately, during Corona time, that time is cut. You can't do that. You, you, can't, you, 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 you don't have that liberty. You don't have that flexibility to do that, unfortunately. So you need to try out something. I mean, but still, you have to do. So it's an immediate response that we all did, and then we went in. So when we, need to, we need to embrace the technology. We need to, now, when you embrace the technology or when you bring that technology into the schools, it is not only the teaching learning process that we're going to address. It's not that we are just going to take online classes one after the other, one after the other. There's a lot of teaching happening and the students downloading lectures and then viewing it. And no, that's not, the, that's not going to happen. And that's not what we want. I mean, that's not what I'm going to, in the next slide that is going to come up. It's not that we just uh, embrace technology. When we, so, uh, so in the next five seconds, I'm going to throw out some words over here. Now, those words are very strong words, and those words have a lot of meaning, and they are all connected to technology. You might have heard, most of you might have heard about it. So I'll just go ahead and throw out those words to you. I pretty much got all the words there. Most of you might have heard about this. And most of you may be doing it also. So some of you might have heard about, definitely most of you might have heard most of it. Some of you may be definitely doing this. For example, you may be taking feedback in your class. You may be doing some analysis of your results that you come, for example, if it's the 12th standard results or the 10th standard results, how was it last year, how was it this year? You may be doing some assessments on computers probably. I don't know, some of the schools do that. But then, when you embrace technology, when you select that platform, it's not only for teaching or learning. Teaching learning is definitely a, is a major part of that. Now, when you do that, when you embrace technology, all these come along with that. And it's not that it's not possible to get all these eight components. There are much more, rather. I've just selected eight of those components and put it in this in the in this slide. Now, it's not possible to get everything in one go. You may have to go stepwise. You may bring in flipped classroom first, and then you may do some asynchronous teaching. Now let's see what are these, uh, what, what exactly does these mean? So because I know that most of you may be new to this, uh, new to these, um, uh, tech, I mean, uh, keywords, or some of these processes. Now flipped classroom is definitely uh, something that we should do beyond Corona. That's how we need to be doing because we cannot do the synchronous teaching probably for some time now. Even after Corona, the immediate. We don't know what the government is going to do. We don't know how Corona thing is going to uh, you know, turn out to be. Maybe we may have to conduct patchwise classes. We may have to do a blended learning. Blended means I have some online, some in-person, so students may come to the school, I don't know, I'm just guessing, two days a week, three days a week, I don't know. We didn't know what's going to happen. I mean, we, didn't, we, we, didn't have, we never expected what's happening right now. So re be ready to expect, I mean, it could be anything. So you may have to do a lot of asynchronous teaching. Asynchronous means you have a lot of things, a course ready out there. The students need to, now here is where I need to, also, I, I, I will also address the small percentage of students over here. The students also need to understand this. 
there's a lot of learning that they do they need to do they need to do a lot of learning by themselves it's not that they do everything and then come and write the exam no they need to understand that they also need to work together with the teacher if they want to learn something so the teacher so when you say flip classroom we could always already you could have done i mean most of you may maybe we all do that i mean i know, i know that there are a lot of applications out there like uh, byju's or uh, udemy or coursera there are a lot of lot of lot of courses that are out there khan academy a lot of things so and students i mean i mean i mean one 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 way you can i mean every school should will will now work should work probably is there will be no homework the homework is also flipped because right now what happens is the teacher teaches something and then the homework comes at the end of the class for the next day but that will change now you need to do the homework you need to learn you need to you need to probably the three days that you are out of the school you need to learn that you need to study you may be video it may be some uh, some documents that are shared by the whether it's university students it may be little more mature students so you may be able to do some other things so you need to do that and then the students come in so the student is already had an experience with the topic that you're talking about they only experience the topic they may not have completely understood but they may at least experience something then the teacher can take them from that level of understanding to a higher level we could have done that previously also before covid also that's what, that's what doing so it's not it's something new it's, it, so that's again going back to the kitchen the whole ingredients are were there always there but somehow i don't know how to use it or i did not use it i did not try it out so flip classroom i think to the teaching now all these things are, i mean all those words or all those processes are interleaved there is something feeding something to the other there is something taking out data from one so when you do the flip classroom or asynchronous teaching you could run some feedback like i did a poll i could get feedback from the people you could run small 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 quizzes during the class when you are teaching online now that is the those are the those are the uh, functionalities or features that you should look in your platform that you're going to take am i able to run some assessments during my class so when my class is going on am i able to throw a small quiz at the student so i will throw a quiz which will have only three questions four questions it should get you in one minute or two minutes they say yes no 3.5 8.9 feeling like that so you get a feeling what what's happening there and that all the data actually you're grabbing from the student and all that teaching that you do whether it is in the flipped classroom or whether you yeah sorry not the flipped classroom the classroom that your online teaching that you do that can be recorded the session that i am doing right now is being recorded so if somebody has not attended this then they can always go back and then see the recording at a later stage so it's it, it's more of a creation of content again so if i run a course on if if i teach let's say i teach uh, computer programming in the, or database in my college if i am able to record all those and store it in a repository on a long term basis i could ask my students to view that it's not that i don't go and teach the next semester i know that some people i mean the teachers over here the first question probably comes is does that mean you are going to do away with the teacher definitely not it's not possible what 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 technology would do is take the teacher to the next level where they could engage with the students in a much more uh, engaging level so the whole thing goes to a repository assessment can become digital when you do assessment in digital i'll give a, i'll give a short a small a small example of what digitization will help i mean how would how does it help you in understanding the students or understanding yourself i mean i'll come to that after this slide so all these words that we see they are all interlinked when you get a personalized feedback you know what the student have understood so all these will has to happen in a digital platform and when you do a digital platform don't don't do it in half way that's one one some mistake some i mean somebody somebody some people do they say that okay i will do this part i'll make this digital no if you do that okay you will get the benefits of that 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 portion being digital 
But then, unless you do from end-to-end -end digitization, you don't get the entire benefit of embracing the technology. And it's not, it's not easy to do it. It will take time. But let's start now. We should have started some time back. Then we would have not have been in a problem right now. The only thing or the only, the only, I mean, you know, uh, part that we need to think about could be the uh, teaching learning process. So the digital assessments, and then you have, it, it's a dynamic engagement, you know. I can keep shifting my, the way I, because honestly, when I came for this session in, in, in the, uh, at 3.45 or 4 o'clock, I don't know whom I'm talking to. How do I know? So how do I create my content? If this whole, if this whole uh, content was aimed towards students, what would I have been? But you need to create content that will that'll, that'll, that'll work for, there's something for everybody. So I need to know the, and, and you are the right people because you are in that domain. If you are in the school, you know that they're all eight standard students. So it's easier. You know, they are all from the age channel. They are all in the first year students or the second year students. It's easy. And you can change, keep changing your class, um, uh, what pace that you need to know. Go. For example, you do a, say you are doing a session of one hour. 20 minutes, give a quiz. Get the feedback. You find that people have not probably understood something. And then you go back and probably ask the question because some students don't ask questions yet, unless you ask them directly. So it's the, the entire technology, when you bring in the platform, you bring in a lot of things will get connected. Your classrooms, learning, assessments, your feedback, your, the collaboration, because I mean, I'm talking about digital collaboration because we are not able to personally meet between students. So you could have a forum where people could start questioning, asking questions, and one student answering the, answering the question of another student, and that has to, I mean, it has to happen because uh, unless we have, we collaborate during this time and we are not able to meet together, the children will, or especially the children will have problems. So you need to, you need to bring in that collaboration. And then get a data analytics. Now I'll, I'll come to the data analytics. I mean, so I'll just take a small example and we'll see how, the, how, the, how, how that will help. So I think we are almost 45 minutes. So, uh, I'll just get to that um, one, one, one that, that small example of um, uh, how analytics. Uh, you are all familiar with this screen. Uh, I hope you all have probably most of you have used this uh, Excel. Uh, this is just an Excel um, screen. So if you see the Excel screen, uh, these are marks of some students. Okay, let's say I have one, two, three, four, five, six students in my class, and then I have I am taking an exam for two chapters two or three chapters, three chapter exam. And I have five questions. And each of those questions, five questions, each of those questions actually connect to a particular concept that I've taught in this three chapters. So if I take my subject, let's say, you know, so it could be about, let's say, computer programming. It could be about variables. Another concept may be about, um, let's say, uh, expressions. Another concept maybe of an if statement. So the questions could be connected to a concept. Now if you, if you analyze the marks that each student has got in each of those questions, if you keep writing that in a, in, in, in a piece of paper, and then you will find that in this particular exam, everybody in the concept two, there is a sudden dip. Everybody has pretty much answered. But there is a dip in the question number two, why? Is it because everybody, I mean, I mean, it, it's a coincidence. So if you take a 60 student or average, this gives you an idea. So when your assessments are online, you don't have to, have to type it into an Excel sheet or not. That will automatically get into the database. This is only a, a minuscule. A minuscule means a very, very small thing that I'm showing when, when you have data analytics or when you have technology built into your school. It's not only for teaching and learning. When you bring in that platform, there are a lot of things that will come. Now, this is only a small example I said. So I find that, that that concept two is dipped down. Probably I have not taught it properly. It, this is a feedback for me. There could be a feedback for the students. 
with a class average that we already do. And, and today, if I want to find where am I in my class, there is no way to find for a student of eighth standard. If they want to find out in a class average, where are they standing, there's no way to find out. If all assessments are online, and if all those marks, all those numbers are online, the student could themselves go. I mean, there are, there are, there are colleges doing that. There are universities doing that. There are a lot of people, but we need to get, I mean, schools, you need to do that. So you need to understand this. This gives you an understanding of the student. This, so technology, when you begin, there are a lot of other things that come. It's not only teaching and learning. It's not only you, you put a camera and then tease the students. You need to take the entire platform assessments, uh, repository of what you've taught. So all this is a, it's, it's a combination of all these things that, that, that you need. So, so all these things when you do, we go back to a slide which we saw in the beginning. The student's experience may increase. They get to know more, they get more, they, they are more concentrated. The, 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 the classroom teaching becomes pure teaching because some of the learning will happen outside the classroom and some of them will happen inside the classroom. Now there is a problem today. I mean, this is only on teaching of whatever you want to use theory, but they, we still have problems of doing an experiment, let's say a physics experiment or a chemistry experiment. Now those things have to be solved by some simulations and so on. Because you can't get the student to a, a lab or they will have to have these in their house. I mean, it, 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 it's quite difficult. So there the technology cannot, I mean, technology has got some answers for that, but then it's not completely, uh, you know, uh, experiential for the students. It could be a simulation of those, those, uh, those things. So, Identify the di right digital platform. That's the key part of it. And we have seen what are those components that come. And when you embrace the technology, again, good knowledge of the domain, what are the challenges? We've gone back to the same slide again. Okay. So these are the things that you know. And to so the domain knowledge, when you have the domain knowledge, you, know, you understand the challenges. Because right now you know, my problem is that I can't talk to my students. So you find out some mechanism, whether it's WhatsApp or a Google uh, meeting or a WebEx meeting or a Teams, Microsoft, GoToMeeting, Zoom, whatever. Identify the solution and adopt it. But it's not that you need to do this. I mean, it just adopt it and then goodbye. No. You need to adopt. You need to review that. And that the data will tell you. You need to take feedback from the students. That's, again, a digital process of taking the feedback. Understand what the problems are there. That again, digitally, you can take the survey. You can, you can get data of the students. Go back. Go back to, I mean, maybe you will understand more about your domain. You may understand the better challenges. You may, you may get into more challenges probably. So you need to go through this, iterate through this. And then, the, and today, as of today, what is the biggest challenge? The biggest challenge is the technology itself. That's a paradox actually, but... Unfortunately, technology itself is a challenge because we don't have access to technology. Most of us don't. We need to, the knowledge of, the, of, of what we need to do, I mean, probably the technology, the, the, the knowledge of what technology ex I mean, exists out there, budgets, I mean, this, this is a, one, of the, one of the most important, I mean, ultimately you need, when technology, when you talk about technology, there needs to be some budget. But those budgets that you put in technology, if you put it at the right segments, it will definitely give you productivity. It will definitely be benefits out of it. The most important, connectivity. I'm not getting connected. My Wi-Fi is not working. My 3G does not come through. My ISP tower is far off. Unfortunately, we have to leave with this for the time being. And these are some of the challenges that everybody is facing today. And probably, we all, I mean, we say it's also the government and our administrators, everybody, they could have, they, we could have solved it. But we have, I mean, compared to some people, we are much better when you talk about the, but then there are pockets out there where we have property. And then, of course, the security of all this, because we are putting our children into a domain which is connected online. And we know what all problems are there in that domain. When you put them, when you put all of them into an online domain, the kind of privacy issues and a lot of problems are there. So you need to ensure that when you when you bring in technology, whether it's for teaching, learning, flipped classroom, all those, because they are always connected to the internet. 
we need to have a, 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 a robust, secure process. That's why I said it has to be end-to-end. -end. You can't take some part and then, because when you take, let's say, you allow this, a WhatsApp classes. When they're using that smartphone, that's already connected to WhatsApp of many other people. It could be their parents' mobile. So what kind of security do you have there? So security is cybersecurity I'm, I'm, I'm referring to. So that should be, that's an extremely, because it encompasses a whole lot of things that you do. And uh, what, what, what's actually happening? What, what is the reality actually? In reality, what's happening is, this is something that I would like to discuss probably. I would like to read this. There is nothing, there's no technology here. This is the real situation. I can talk about flip classroom. I can say that <clears throat> 2 MB uh, connection, I'll teach online, my video will come, my audio will come, I'll store it in a server, you can download from there. All those things you can say. But what is the reality also you should understand? Because you all are now connected. You're all listening to me. I'm able to connect to you. But there are a large number of people who are not able to do this. Where are we addressing that? This is a problem. I'm moving, so we need to understand, we need to be knowing what's happening out there. So if you see what is the electricity, I mean, see, this is, these, are, these are actual figures that I pulled out of ministry uh, sites. Although 99% is having a power connection, 16% receive one to 80, uh, I mean, hours of electricity daily. So how do you charge your mobile? How do you charge your laptop? How do you, I mean, we'll come to the laptop and our smartphones shortly. I'm talking about only the power. There are only 38, I mean, I, if I, my numbers are right, there are only 38% people who are connected on TV in India. So if you're trying to stream through TV, there is a large group of people, a large percentage of the population who does not have connection to the TV or the lessons that come on the TV. So uh, <clears throat> the smartphones, it's not, it's not huge number, I mean, and I, I would like to go slightly faster. I mean, I, these are numbers that you can pull out, but this is just to make you understand. I mean, or maybe you could ask questions and then we could discuss. I mean, there, there's no, I mean, I don't have an answer for this or I don't have a solution for this, honestly. Actually, I'm part of the problem also. So if you, I mean, this last slide, I mean, this, this slide is more very, 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 very important. This is important. This, yes, this, this slide is talking about people between the age five and 24. And that's the group that we are, who are going through education or teaching and learning process. You bring in technology, all those things, 8% only have uh, access to both computer and internet. So what are the remaining 92% doing? Are they able to access? You go to your village, there are schools, number of schools there. Do they have an internet connectivity? Can they come to the school? No. So where are they sitting? Are they having internet connection over there? These are some questions that, I mean, I, I want to share these questions with you because we should be thinking about it. And that's where probably, I mean, there's nothing much we can do, but maybe we can do in your, in your societies. You know. Give connect, I mean, probably bring them, teach them. I mean, I mean, I know there are a lot of people doing that community work, but even that, because of the lockdown, people are not even. So there's a big digital divide. There is a digital divide, and that's going to increase because of the corona. So we need to solve that also somehow. We need to find. Understand that. So that's that, that that so with that, I would now open up for questions. So there's with the digital divide, you know. So if you have any questions, please put it up on the Q and A. I'll just go to the Q and A and see. Um, There's already a question on which I was talking about. <clears throat> now there's a, there's a question. Okay, <clears throat> I'll, 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 I'll give away the question first. The question is how to assess the children during online class? Very difficult. Now when you say how to assess, how to assess? Yeah, assessment is digitally it's possible. In fact, for our university, all our exams are online. And when you say exams are online, where are they? I mean, that, again, we go back to the connectivity, the issue of um, connectivity. So assuming, assuming, I mean, assuming that they're all connected. Uh, I think this question was asked by Sheetal Sevak. So assuming that the students are connected, 
if you're giving an online exam, I mean, it's not a proctored exam in even. So how do you give that is probably the question. So I don't have a way that the student will not open the book. So that is where the teacher needs to come in and put up a challenging question where they go into the internet or they go into the, into, into the, into, into the textbook, they will not get the answer. They have, to, they have to think and answer that question. So make it challenging. Make the assessments challenging. That's the only way we can do when you do online exams. And in fact, online exams are, I mean, if you want to, if you, if you want to uh, need to give you a tool that will allow you to um, uh, do online exams is uh, the Google Forms will allow you to do. Microsoft Forms also will allow you to do. And these are all free uh, out there. So you can actually conduct quizzes. But they, I mean, as I told you, you need to put challenging, extremely challenging questions out there so that they think and answer. There's a question on um, what is a suitable tech which I can use while teaching physics? Uh, teaching, of course, learning process, as I told you, lectures, there are many platforms out there. But then when you come to physics, you need to use some simulation packages. I think there will be a lot of simulation packages that will come out in the, in, in, in the, in the future. And because people are all online, they are they're trying to make online simulation packages where I could go in and then connect things like for example i have a transistor i put a transistor out there i put a resistor i connect this and then i get a reading on that so i could virtually do those exam uh, uh, the, the, those labs in fact there are packages which are available which will allow you to do virtual physics experiments so that's thank you for the question so i'll go to the next question is on how can we make our e-learning interesting and effective? Uh, this is a totally a different ball game because there are courses available. They're free now. I mean, if if I can point you to uh, something called, if you can if you can just note down the site name, uh, it is edx.org. <clears throat> I think some of you might have already seen this. edx.org. Uh, they're offering a free uh, coupon to learn on how to learn online, not teach online, how to learn online. And if you go to Coursera, there are courses which will teach you how to teach online because you need to do, I mean, you need, the, the way is you need to make it more engaging. Don't ever try a lecture for more than one hour. I'm actually gone more than one hour. That's a wrong answer. But this is another, this is a different group, so probably I can, Take another 15 minutes. I would always recommend a teaching time of 30 minutes, 40 minutes maximum. And within that 40 minutes, you should have one or two breaks where you give a quiz to them through that platform. Ask them some online quiz, some two, three questions. And in this time of pandemic, you should chat with the students at the end of the session. In the, session, in the, in the, in the sense that don't talk technology, don't talk anything about the subject. Talk on general things. Spend some five minutes with the students so that they just interact and collaborate with you because they're not meeting people. They could chat with their children, I mean, with their friends, and so that platform should be used for that. So 30 minutes to 40 minutes with two or three breaks in between, which will make them engaging and then asking questions and so on. So that's how you make it engaging. Uh, there is a question on, um, does Amrita University collaborate with NGOs if they want to use your platform to disperse education content? Uh, this is from Mr. Nagesh. Mr. Nagesh, you don't need to, I mean, there are umpteen uh, uh, you know, sites out there, I mean, especially Google and Microsoft. They are giving their entire platform free, and not only through coronavirus, I mean, even before it was free, you could upload uh, documents, you could use their, you can use their uh, interactive platform, uh, for interacting with the students, and so there are a lot of, lot of, lot of um, uh, uh, platforms out there which will allow you to do that. Uh, okay, uh, how to ensure students are attending online effectively? I think I already answered that. Make it short. Make it more engaging. 
that's the only way you can make it and and as, as i mean the, the more engaging you can make it like you know either by illustrations and uh, quizzes i mean asking it's not it's not test don't call it by test or something it's only a you can call it by poll if you want to just to know how the students are reacting so that's how you make it more effective you know and then uh, and then you take them to some other sites which they can always watch and come so they already seen something in so okay uh some parents have got doubts about authenticity of learning through online platforms yes i told you about security so please ensure that these sites are valid ones i mean it is authorized by the school so as a teacher you need to authorize whether you want to really want to uh, take them to that site and then use it okay uh some of the questions are similar uh assessing answers and all these are okay this is a very good question um, uh, madam patma srinivas i mean after we overcome this pandemic do you think we have to continue technology i think my presentation did address that uh you have to because it's not just teaching online you could be teaching in the class but as you teach in the class you could have online assessments which will create the data which will allow you to understand each of those students and the students also will be able to understand themselves and then create that data analytics the repository you could i mean you could even record all your lectures that you're taking in the class i mean of course there is a budget constraint there but then you could do so you could you could you should do i mean i mean i as i i mean as i see it we should be using technology even whether corona is there or not i think i address that in my lecture and taking more more questions because most of the questions are similar type so i am not answering them uh as, uh for example if children how do you know that they are paying attention to the class so that's how the teacher needs to a little more engaging like you know so you say that at, at every 5 minutes you throw out a question to each of you can you could even call out the student's name you know and then ask them to interact that that makes them you know part of the entire process see uh, there is a question is it right to assess children of 6 to 8 years of age their parents may answer this is where we are we are all worried about the exams and the marks that you get let's not worry about that it's it's teaching that we have to do so they need to learn so unfortunately only if they un see the the, the 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 basic i mean the the very nature of exams in india has become like that only if i answer the if i answer the question correctly i have learned no i could have learned it i could have learned something but it could be a different from what i learned you know uh, what i'm supposed to learn so what what happens is i may not have understood the entire thing correctly so that is where the teacher needs to work with the student so make them understand that this test is not the ultimate thing it's much beyond that so i don't believe that i mean when when you do these tests online don't believe those uh, ans i mean marks at all but it is that is i told you you make a challenging uh, questions i mean parents answering that questions for the child anyway i don't have an answer for that but then these are some cultural things so that has to that has to come from the people the teachers can definitely play a big role in that there are a lot of questions i mean most of them are similar i and some of them i have already answered in my session so i don't want to take up those i will also bring up a poll right now because i would i mean this is for your i'll just bring up another poll
this is uh, i'm taking your email id and name this is for your e certificate so please respond to that so that the e certificate can be sent to you so that poll is already on i will also take up the questions meanwhile i mean there are questions about children at a young age 6 to 8 years it's extremely difficult to teach online i mean i would say i mean uh you need to bring in uh, some engaging animations or games probably gaming is a is a big way of teaching gaming it doesn't mean that you have something like pubg or uh, uh, you know you uh, know uh, battle kind of thing no these are simple small games for children below the age of 10 you know you could have small small games that will teach them arithmetic teach them uh, some amount of uh, uh, how to behave things like that so it's difficult i mean it, it, i mean we are in a in, in in a position i mean we are in a for example there are a lot of software out there you need to evaluate them and then find as i told you it's like the kitchen there are a lot of things there you need to find out those bits and pieces and find out the right combination and then give it to the student uh video of teacher while teaching is effective or only audio recording ppt is effective if the teacher or if the students already know you yes then it makes a lot of sense to send ppts with audio but don't give everything with ppt audio i mean not the whole, the entire set of lectures sometimes you need to record your video also and sometimes you need to do video i mean interactive video also so they also come on the camera and then you speak to them it has to be a combination teachers are under pressure yes i mean it is we are all under pressure the whole society is under pressure and uh, somehow we have to handle it i mean how to handle it uh it's more of interaction but if you if you if you have noticed how many calls have you made to your friends and uh, relatives over the last two months and if you take a data analytics of that the calls that you have made to your friends i mean far of friends or whatever in the last two months and then what you have done in the last six months i mean before the before the covid you will find that you have made much more calls you may have made much more video calls so that itself shows that collaboration is definitely required and it has to be interactive i mean you have to interact with the students that actually brings down the pressure so i mean we, once you talk it makes a lot of and especially the students at that age needs to be uh, i mean it's not only the because they are only seeing the parents now probably during the lockdown and we i hope the lockdown will open up soon and we are out of this uh, some of the questions again i have answered uh there are i mean there is a question the video content prepared by me is only accessible by to my students yes if you take the google classroom there are mechanisms to uh, the only only they can see it they will not be able to download so those kind of technologies are there where your video will not go out of your domain i mean your your school uh, repository uh i think it's 515 so some of the questions probably i will take it up in my email i don't mind uh, online teaching activities there are a lot of i mean sites out there uh, khan academy is definitely good udemy coursera edx which i showed you now technology is there's one question on and this is a practical thing happening i mean i have seen it directly in front of my eyes in fact there are people my neighbors who have multiple children so two two children and uh, fortunately they are twins but they are in different classes so they have and they would like to, i mean they would like to remain i mean so if so, one one of the one of one of the one of the kid is having a class the device is occupied 
So this is a basic problem everybody is. So in those cases, uh, what you could do is you could actually uh, uh, send the video as a recording. You may be able to take a class while taking the class recorded. So some of them may be viewing uh, you live, and some of them may be viewing you offline. Because maybe when you're teaching the class, the internet connection may not be there, so they could always come back, or the power is there, they could come back at a later time and watch it. In fact, I got my friend who has got triplets. They're all in, I mean, fortunately, all the triplets, all the three girls are in the same class. So they were in three different classes. You can imagine three devices that they need to attend the classes. So technology is definitely, I mean, because what happens is if you, if, if you see, maybe down the line, all of them will have a device, which is not very, uh, I mean, we always say that the device should be, is not a good thing to be given to a student. To a, to a child, you know, especially. So these are some, now, now these are something that we need to address as psychologists probably. I'm, I'm not a psychologist, I'm a psychologist. So th those are the people that are the educated we need to work together and find out a good framework to deliver this. Technology is there. Technology is definitely there. The only thing is that what parts you need to take, how do you want to tune it, and then make a package and give it to students. And that, that a technologist cannot do it. The technologists can only suggest what technology you can use, but then they have to work with the, the technologists, have to work with the teachers, psychologists, administrators, they all come to, need to come together and find the right combination and what you're going to cook, the right, com, the right ingredients for that, for that package or for that dish, so that it makes, it, it, it tastes good to the student and they would, they, would, they would like taking it also. That's, that's what we want. So I think that's all the questions. I think I have covered most of it. Um, And uh, I think you have all given me the poll also. The poll has closed. I mean, so I've got the. Answers for that, let me save that. Okay, so uh, so thank you. I mean, I'm 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 happy that you all joined today's session, and uh, I hope this has made some sense of uh, how technology can come into the school. Technology has to come into the school somehow or the other, and uh, we do have a lot of challenges in terms of uh, addressing this, and it cannot be done by only the Technologists, as I told you, the teachers, technologists, everybody has to work together. So let us pray that we come out of this as soon as possible. And uh, we are all able to tide over and then keeping the spirit of the students and, I mean, and the teaching process. And then make it as much beneficial for our students and the children out there. Loka Samastha Sukhino Bhavandu. Thank you. I'm sure I Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for all the attendees. Uh, and thank you very much for, for Sivat Sinsa for this engaging session. So, and uh, thank you.